Let me read to you a passage from the fourth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 24 to 30. It's the Gospel for Monday of the third week of Lent. St. Luke writes, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any one of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow <coughs> of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. That's from Luke chapter 4, verse 24 to 30. It suggests thoughts of faith. The passage I've just read is part of Luke's account of a visit by our Lord to his hometown of Nazareth. Matthew also describes a return visit. It is well into the public ministry. In Matthew's account, chapter 13, verse 54 to 58, our Lord came to his own country, Matthew writes, and he taught them in their synagogue. We are told by Matthew that they could not fathom how he had gained his wisdom and his miraculous powers, for he was but the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and the relative of many still with them. The upshot was that they took offence at him, and as our Lord said, he was not honoured as a prophet there. Because of their lack of faith, he worked but few, but few miracles among them. Mark's account is virtually the same, Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, though it is slightly longer. He gives more details of the few miracles he worked there and adds the detail that our Lord marvelled at their unbelief. Exactly the same word is used by St Luke in describing our Lord's reaction to the faith of the centurion. He was amazed at the degree of his faith. The word is in the aorist tense, suggesting a one-off and brief event. Here, Mark says that Christ was amazed at their lack of faith and the verb is in the imperfect tense. It suggests a state of wonder that continued over at least a brief time. But our passage today is from St Luke, and in Luke's account we have a passage that goes for some 15 verses, much longer than either Matthew or Mark. While Matthew and Mark mention our Lord speaking in the synagogue of Nazareth, Luke gives us much vivid detail of our Lord's actions, the very text he used, it was from the prophet Isaiah, and his striking comment on it, and the people's totally unfavourable reaction. He declared that he was the one who fulfilled the prophecy. He spoke wondrously to the astonishment of the townspeople, and he also unmasked before them their fundamental problem. They lacked faith in him. Indeed, they compared unfavourably with the widow of Sidon and with Naaman the Syrian, both outside the chosen people. The account of Luke is not a direct parallel with Matthew and Mark, and may describe a distinct visit, or even maybe a summary of a few visits. We do not know. Very notably, it ended with a sensational attempt by the townsmen on our Lord's very life. Plainly, it is a very significant event in the mind of St. Luke, and I suspect that its source is the mother of Jesus who may have witnessed it. It would have been part of the sword that cleaved her soul once her son's public work commenced, as predicted by Simeon soon after his birth. While St Luke places this early in our Lord's public ministry, Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 30, the incident described by Matthew and Mark, containing no mention of the attempt to throw him from the brow of the hill, and then presumably to stone him, is placed later in the public ministry, so we cannot determine the chronology of our scene today. The truly dramatic thing is the rejection of Jesus Christ. Our Lord solemnly foresees it, warns of its tremendous seriousness, and compares the lack of faith of those who knew him so well, and who had long been his daily associates 
in the village of Nazareth with certain of the Gentiles. We're not given a detailed description of the inner workings of the minds of his townspeople, just the general fact of their unbelief. It was a forerunner of the rejection of Jesus Christ by the principal religious leaders of the nation. Significantly, our Lord sees their response against the backdrop of the faith possessed by certain Gentile persons. Here our Lord refers to the Sidonian and the Syrian in the prophetic ministries of Elijah and Elisha. In other contexts of the Gospels, other Gentile persons are referred to and mention, I've already mentioned, the centurion. Our Lord had spent his infancy, his youth and his many years of his early manhood, the overwhelming proportion of his life within the tiny community of Nazareth. St. John in the prologue of his Gospel states that he came to his own, and his own did not accept him. John chapter 1 verse 11. If ever there was an instance of this pattern, it was, Luke is telling us, the village of Nazareth, so privileged as to have had among them for so long the Lord of glory. Our Lord's unique claims were resoundingly rejected, and in an explosion of fury they attempted to put an end to the life of one of their own sons. Our Lord's sovereign quality was demonstrated in his response. He was not shaken, and indeed, as he so often showed in the future, he easily eluded their attempt. His hour had not yet come. The response of our Lord's own village may be taken as iconic of the response to whatever degree that is possible in any human heart. How awesome is the heart of man it is capable of great goodness and holiness, and it is capable of the worst evil. That is to say, goodness and holiness with the aid of grace. Man the saint and man the sinner. It all depends on our openness to the truth, and especially our openness to the truth revealed by God. That truth is Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The path to life, its to its flourishing, to holiness, and to heaven, lies in faith in his person and his teaching. Let us take heed of the tragedy of the village of Nazareth and accept Jesus Christ as Lord.